Welcome to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. This is Challenge 12, When Life Gives You Lemons. A very long mouthful of a title, but it's a challenge that's actually pretty smooth. Even though I think it's kind of on the easy side, at least it has an interesting gimmick. And the gimmick is Infinite Lemons. So, in this challenge, you start with Lemon Mishap, and then you start also with 9 Volt, which makes it so that after every room, your Lemon Mishap will already be ready to use, and you will be able to put on another puddle of deadly lemon. Essentially, that's your main method of attack for this one challenge, but hey, you still have tears, so in the end you can fight w in whatever way you want. More so considering in cases like these where your lemon mishap is completely useless because the horsemen of the apocalypse are unfortunately flying, so therefore your lemon has no effect. And finally the last item that we have is the habit, which means that every single time you get hurt, then your lemon will recharge and you will be able to lay down yet another puddle. So, yeah, this challenge is indeed giving you lemons. Oh, and without even speaking, you also start with a lemon party pill. I think it's one of the only challenges in the game where you will start with a pre-identified pill, even though you have no item in order to identify pills or anything. So, yeah, just in the likelihood that you need even further lemon power. And since this is one of the challenges that is unlocked as you start the game, then you only need to go to mom in this one challenge. So, all in all, it's a pretty easy challenge. Nothing too difficult about this one. I mean, rooms like these used to be so intimidating, but at this point you can just wait it out into your puddle of lemon, and you will destroy every single enemy. Also, I totally wish that I still had a bomb. But that said, it might be a little bit more delicate whenever you're dealing with those cowardly spiders that just refuse to go near you or away from your anything. Therefore, it can become tricky to just make it so that they will go into your puddle. Even when you think you've got them trapped, then you can still fuck it up. Alright, wait for it. Yeah, this is one challenge that really makes you appreciate that Lemon Mishap is... Well, surprisingly, it's a pretty good item. I mean, there are fights like this one where it will be somewhat tedious to go through the fight, but look at how fast it will go. Yep. Oh, and here's one of the items that we got from finishing the game seven times. Experimental Treatment, aka one of the most misleading items of the entire game. The game says that it increases all of your stats and then shuffle them, but it's a complete lie. What this item actually does is to either decrease or increase your stats. It can touch pretty much every single stat that you have. And this is why this item is pretty dangerous, because if it touches any of your vital stats, then you can end up being screwed up really bad by the item. I mean, you can just end up picking experimental treatment, and what will happen is that it'll lower your damage as well as your tear firing speed, so therefore it can leave you as a, as a totally useless slump of a character that will do absolutely nothing. Here, I've been pretty lucky, and I think it increased both my damage and my tear firing speed, but as a trade-off, I lost my shot speed as well as the speed of my character. I'm definitely slower than I was in the past. Sometimes you can get lucky and it can pretty much boost all of your stats, but for every time that it happens, you'll usually pick this item up and you'll pretty much regret ever picking it up. So be careful whenever you have experimental treatment. If your character is good the way he is, then don't pick it up. Uh, probably should have moved downwards in order to try and lure the very slow character to walk into the puddle of lemon, but unfortunately it's a thing that will happen for another day. Also, I'm not really sure that picking up regular chests is going to be too useful. But yeah, even these enemies, the lemon is not always the best way to deal with them. Honestly, at this point, 
Whenever you feel like trying to get them to do something, then they're not going to do it. I really hate the greed that much. Uh, they're just a little bit too unreliable. But hey, at least this uh, completely disemboweled body was really reliable in walking to its doom. I've mind and overall is always a good item to have, but right now I think we're just going to stick with whatever we have because in this one challenge you generally will not want to trade off your lemon because usually it's the one item that will carry off your entire run and with this set of items that you're given, the lemon mishap is pretty damn good actually, so you probably will want to stick with it. So for instance you can have good old fashioned fights with Peep where you can use his own arsenal against him. The Pea monster is about to get peed on. Yuck. This is the kind of opportunity where I really realize that this game is kind of gross. Okay, that's what I waited for. Instead of trying to get him to walk into the pea, you just get him to jump into it with both of his feet. I have to say, so far I'm pretty happy that I've managed to keep on my lemon pill. Or my lemon party pill. Because usually whenever you get rooms like these, eh, you can just solve it really easily. Okay, so this is the kind of room where you'll want to have lemon party, because fuck dealing with those enemies. Just spray the entire room green or yellow or anything, and then victory will be assured. With that said, however, this challenge is still going to be easier if you have a good damage output because even Lemon Mishap is not going to help you too much whenever it comes to dealing with those skull enemies because their movement is just way too unreliable in order to really try anything worthwhile. Number one, have successfully vanquished number two. So if I really was in a hurry and I was completely reckless, I could just let myself be hit in order to refill my lemon and then I'd be able to create more lemons in order to take care of the little pooplets. But at this point, I don't think it's really that worthwhile considering how easy they, they die. And finally, the fact that they pretty much run away from you or they just do whatever they want in terms of movement. I really don't think they have any kind of AI whatsoever whenever it comes to chasing. They just do whatever they please. Alright, it's time to truck along very slowly. Honestly, I think the only thing that will be good in order to make the challenge go by better will be to be a little bit faster, but I'm gonna say it this one time, this is one of the only times where I'll say that uh, the experimental treatment thing did me really good. Usually I have way worse luck whenever it comes to this item. In the meantime, we can appreciate the lump of coal doing some work. If I get enough range on one of these, uh, on any of these shots whenever it comes to connecting with those poop enemies, then I will kill them in one hit instead of two. With that said, there is an interesting tidbit about the poop enemies into this game. Depending on how far you are into your playthrough, their health will change. From floor to floor, their damage, or I mean the damage that they can take, will keep increasing more and more. So, Mega Fatty is a boss that have been tailor-made for pissing under the floor like that. I mean, if you didn't jump away from that, I'm pretty sure that just putting this one puddle would have been enough to kill him in one hit. It would have taken a couple of time, but it would have happened at some point without any kind of problem whatsoever. Also, Guppy's paw is a no-go because we gotta keep the lemon. And at this point, we might as well fly because I have hearts to piss away at this point. Are you ready to piss your pants in terror because it's the necropolis? 
Okay, that was not as ominous as I would have liked it to be, but we gotta do we gotta go with what we have at our disposal in order to do any kind of advertising. So, all in all, I think we're in a really good situation. We have good damage, which is good whenever you bump into rooms like these ones, considering that at this point your arsenal of lemon is not going to do anything to help you. Even then, these bastards can just jump away from your puddle of lemon in order to disregard entirely your assault. So, all in all, I really hate the Creeded so much. They're really good at getting into your way all of the time. Also, don't ask me why I'm not going into the curse room, considering that I have at least half a heart that I can dispose of without any kind of fear whatsoever, considering that I'll only get damage once upon entering it because I can fly, but knowing me, I'm sure I have a master plan. <clears throat> Who am I kidding? Okay, so do I dare. Do I dare to override the entire challenge and do something completely different out of this playthrough. Well, we'll see in due time. I'm not gonna do it right now, but depending on the item that I get, unless that it's something that's really good that will pretty much transform my entire run in a magical manner, then we're going to go and reroll everything just in order to see how this can go. You've pretty much got a good guess on how the challenge go, and it's not really going to change that much by the time that we reach Mom. Oh my, this is a great room in order to have all of the items that I have. I really don't regret skipping onto the reroll for the time being because this is going to be perfect for the arsenal of items that we have. I'm just gonna wait for him to jump and then I'll be able to cover him in lemon all over his face. Or maybe he's never going to jump and I'm just going to plaster him. Okay, here we go. Okay, the execution has been horribly botched, but thankfully the end result has just been the same. All hail the devastative powers of Lemon. So, we're just going to backtrack to the reroll room because honestly it's not as if uh, Mom's lipstick is an amazing item to have at this point of the game, so let's just go and take a chance with the reroll. Okay, so... Okay, now, I was complaining about speed earlier, but yeah, it's no longer an issue. And we got a bunch of new items along the way. We got the Mutant Spider, which gives you a quad shot instead of just having a triple shot, a dual shot, or anything. It can be amazing in certain loadouts. Also, we have a couple of familiars accompanying us. We have the bomb bag, which just does exactly as it advertised. Every few rooms and so, you get a bomb. Also, we have the Juicy Sack, which is the white disgusting thing that just lays white creep all over the floor. And whenever you clear rooms, this gives you spiders that you could use. That would have been great to have with Hive Mind, but hey, I would have rerolled it to at this point, so it's a total no-brainer. And the last new item that we have along the way is the Peeper. Essentially, you remember this uh, little fellow that, that is Peep and which just uh, makes his eye fall and bounce all over the room? Well, you can have this effect for yourself as well. It's not the greatest familiar ever, but it does its job every once in a while. Also, I'm pretty sure I must have the Tin Odd Mushroom on my inventory at this point because I fire really damn fast, but my damage is not very good in overall. Which makes me wonder why I even picked up the Rotten BB, because it's really not a big damage boost in overall when your damage is bad. Also, judging at how my character looks, I guess I also have infestation, but I'm not totally sure about this, but just in the likelihood you don't remember what it does, infestation makes you spawn flies whenever you take damage. All in all, it's an item that can be useful, but it's really not a vital part of any arsenal. I'm never really a huge fan of items that require you to get hit in order for them to activate, so all in all, I'd say this is one item that, well, you get it if you can, but other than that, well, it's not really that useful. 
At least in order to compensate my lower damage, I did pick up uh, the pinky eye, which give me poison tears every once in a while. That's pretty much the equivalent of having the common cold item, which is one of the worst poison item of the entire game because it only works whenever it feels like working, as opposed to some item that just makes every single attack that you do poisonous. So, all in all, I don't think we've really lost that much. I mean, we have really bad damage, but whenever you have fast-firing quad shot like that, you don't really need that much damage in order to win in the first place. I mean, even then, enemies for the most part will still die in a rather acceptable period of time. Pretty much the same as if, for instance, I just kept on all of the other items that I had previously with my older regular firing speed that I had and yeah oh okay and I guess we also have sad bombs it's not going to be that much of an asset considering our low damage yet again but it's always fun to have I mean we have 25 bombs in order to use it so oh okay I guess it's a little late to get that but whatever Also, gonna keep the Magician card in order to deal with Mom, because I think it's going to be more an asset than having 25 keys. Usually you don't need 25 keys whenever you're on the last floor of a challenge run, where there's usually no shop worth visiting, or treasure rooms, or anything. So, just get whatever you need in order to destroy everything in your path. Yeah, considering all of these rooms with the statues that suck you toward them, I'm kind of happy that I re-roll now because honestly I probably would have had some trouble outrunning it with my other character. Alright, I guess we're gonna pick some more health considering we cannot afford the compass. We could always bomb the shopkeeper in order to try and get some money out of desperation, but I don't know. I never really find the shopkeeper to be a worthwhile source of money. If I need money and I'm in a real pinch, I'll usually just bomb the donation machine. It's usually shorter and one or two good games after that is going to nullify all of the damage that you've done to your box in the last time that you played. That is assuming that you have the luck. So yeah, we didn't really need to have 30 keys in the hand because here is the end of our challenge. This might be a lengthy fight because of my low damage, but with homing tears, it shouldn't be too bad. And we're just going to bombard the room with random bombs in order to try and speed things up. But whenever it comes to fighting mom, it's kind of hard to use your bombs properly. Unless that you're either lucky or you just position yourself right in front of any of the four doors in order to lure the mom hand into attacking. And honestly, I find this kind of risky considering that mom attacks will always deal you a full heart of damage when they connect. Oh, oops, I wanted to get my negative, but I got caught up in how fast this challenge ended, so... Yep, we got the card against humanity, and it's full of poop. <laughs> okay, I'm not too sure where I was going here. So, in the last update, we unlock a new character called... Uh? And we're going to play as him in the next video.